So that's how attention works. We're not going to continue with the rest of the example. Um, let's have a look, some, a look at something fun. So this is from a research paper where Yosho Benjo was one of the um, co-authors. And this is a translation example from English to French. So here you've got the agreement on the European area was signed in August 1992, full stop, end of sentence. And this is how it translated into French. Uh, L'accord sur la zone économique européenne a été signé à août End of sentence, yeah, well, there we go. That's me showing off my French. Uh, yeah, haven't, haven't learned it in a while. But, so basically, what is going on here? Um, the tra this, these white dots is where the neural network was paying attention to um, as it was translating. So remember, like the weights? So those white dots, they signify the weights on every single word as it was translating. So we gave the neural network this luxury VIP superpower of seeing what's in the, in the whole input. So there's our whole input. And so we gave the neural network the luxury to look at the input every single time, as we just discussed. And then we observed what did it do. So we kind of like now, st I, love these, I love these things. We're studying the neural network as if it was an alien or some kind of... Um, and other species, and we're trying to see what is it thinking, what is it doing. So let's have a look. You can see that here. For, so here it's pretty straightforward. It's translating the. It, it's translating the into like it's translating like word by word. So uh, first word is translated into first word, second word. So the second word into second word, third word into third word, or third word comes from the third word, and so on. But then when you get to la, it's not just looking at the word the, but it's also looking at the word area. Very interesting. It's like, and they're quite far apart. Well, because in French, there are two genders, la, uh, well, female and male, and each one of them has uh, a different the. So for female, you say la, for male, you say le, uh, with an e. And then for plural, you actually say something else. You say, uh, like in English, it would be the areas. Uh, in French, it would be les, L-E-S, zones. Um, so like with, with an S on the end, so areas, areas, but then this one would change to a plural. So you actually have a, a one for female, one for male, and one for plural. And <laughs> I know, but I know you're like thinking French. French is super complicated. It's not. It's it's a really a fun language, but it's it's a specific of the language. And so the machine knows this. The algorithm knows this, and it, it looks okay. So I want to translate the, but in order to translate the, I need more information. So it's paying attention as we saw through the weights to the word, to the noun. And it's very clever. It didn't go for the adjective. Is this an adjective? European, economic, yeah, I guess adjectives. Didn't pay attention to the adjectives, maybe a little bit here, maybe by accident, but it paid it a, quite a significant attention to the word area. Very interesting, right? Okay, so, um, and decided to put la, which is correct. Next is like zone. Um, so here you can see it's paying attention to area again, mostly. Like a little bit to this, I, I don't really know why. Maybe it's like anticipating something or um, not, not sure. Um, then economic, again, is paying attention to the right word, a little bit to European, European, paying attention to European. Okay, so you can see it's kind of like, and here it's, re it's reversed, right? So here you go, uh, in English you go, uh, the European economic area. In French, you go la area economic European. So absolutely the opposite way, and the machine is paying attention in the in the, in the correct order. So the opposite way as well. Okay. Um, then we have this part. This is also interesting because here you have was assigned two words. In French, you actually have three words. A été signé. Uh, it's a passé composé. Uh, is the time. Like in English, we have lots of times. We have past perfect continuous, past perfect, present perfect. And in French, that you also have lots of times. And this one's called passé composé. And so, uh, uh, was sign. So I te is that part. And here is it's really cool because um, if you've studied French, you'll remember that. Or if you haven't, then the case is that 
for it to say like this uh, this construct of passe. I hope I hope I'm uh, this is passe passe indeed. If not, you can correct me. But this construct is um, uh, in order to create it, you need like these words are interdependent. So depending on what uh, what um, uh, what word you have here, the the supporting verb, what verb you have here, the supporting verb will be either avoir or être. In this case, it's avoir because your main word is être. It's it's a bit, it might sound a bit confusing, but the point is that you, in order to decide on these two words, you kind of decide on them one by one. You can't say was translates into this, sign translates into this. You to decide on these two words, you have to look at these two words together. So it was like was sign. Okay, then we know that it's it's aete, and then. Uh, so and then signe is assigned. So there we go. That's why you have this little block over here. Very very interesting stuff. And um, so that was the translation. That's the source. It's from the paper. If you want to have a look. And then finally we have this uh, other paper uh, where uh, Christopher Manning is one of the authors um, from Stanford, if I'm not mistaken. So here. Is a comparison again this is relating to translation as you can see attention yeah, is a very powerful mechanism very well used in translation because there um, the differences in languages are quite uh, can be quite significant and that tension really helps so here you just got a comparison of different models all of these models at the top uh, I yeah all of them have attention as far as I know I'm not sure about this uh, this black one but I think it also has attention and you know, all of them have attention, and these, this one doesn't have attention. And on the x-axis, you have how long the sentences are, how many sentences, how many words. And blue is the uh, score. It's called the bilingual evaluation understudy. And it's a score that uh, algorithms or even humans are used, like that score is used to rate people and, and models on how they, well they're translating things. And so, like a score of 25, is 20, 25 is pretty good. Um, I'm not, not an expert in blue. Like, as far as I know, it should be like between zero and one. What I'm understanding here is um, they're um, like uh, multiplying by 100. But it doesn't really matter at this stage. Like, what we're interested in is the relative comparison. So, like the state of the art models right now, they achieve like just over 30. But uh, there's, I don't think I've seen a model that achieves over 40. And this paper actually was a 2015 paper, so it's already a great result. But the point is, if we compare them side by side against each other, uh, you will see that when you don't have attention, you're doing quite okay for up to 30 words, and then you drop off. So because the sentences get so long, you don't, you're not paying attention, <laughs> you cannot just translate them easily. But with attention, even when the sentences get long, like even over 40, you kind of it flat line. So you get a more or less consistent output uh, outcome of your translation. Um, so that's almost it. Uh, before I just remembered one more thing before we finish off. Um, there's also this is called global attention when you have this whole part. There's also a concept called um, what's it called? It's called local attention when instead of this whole red square, you only look at like two or three words in the sentence. Uh, like that, for example. And then out of them, you have the weights and so on. Um, or just a couple of words. And that uh, is more similar to what humans do. Like if you have like a 20-word a sentence and you're translating it or if you're trying to respond to it, you don't look at the whole sentence every time you think of a new word. You just look at parts of the sentence. And that's more close to what humans do. And it's, it's actually better, better computationally for machines. It's a bit harder to implement, a bit harder for... Um, uh, to like the the mathematics and the conceptually is harder, so it's easier to like kind of brute force through the global attention rather than picking out where we're going to look at it locally and stuff. But it, just so that you're aware, there's these two different concepts: there's global attention, local attention. The one we talked about is um, global attention. And if you'd like to learn more about attention, then the paper I would uh, suggest having a look at is called "Effective Approaches to Attention-Based Neural Machine Translation." Uh, it's by Mingtang uh, Leong, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, and others, including Christopher Manning, and 2015 paper. 
uh, again, this is about translation, but very, very similar conceptually. So everything you'll learn there is still applicable for chatbots. Uh, and, uh, and plus, you'll get some additional examples of how sex to sex is uh, used in a translation. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, enjoy natural language processing.